Welcome to Maryland Medicine Frontline News. Coming up, expanding addiction services in West Baltimore while adapting to the challenges of the pandemic. But first, a step forward for the vaccine trials that could benefit the country and the world. Dr. Scott Balaban has volunteered for the phase one trial of the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine, one of the two major vaccine candidates being tested at the School of Medicine. I'm very happy to be able to help out my colleagues um, and to do something that's also helping out the community at large. But first, Dr. Balaban is tested again for COVID-19. His temperature is taken along with other vitals. Then blood is drawn for a PCR test, which can detect the genetic information of the virus. With a clean bill of health, Dr. Balaban receives his injection, which could be the vaccine or a placebo. This has been unprecedented. So I have to say that in my lifetime, I've never seen such commitment from different scientific backgrounds working together to create a vaccine from when the first viral genomes were published back in January to now in July, we have a vaccine going to humans. I, it's never happened in my lifetime and I'm super excited to be part of something like this. Minority participation is essential since those groups are disproportionately affected by COVID-19. We certainly aren't out to coerce any populations, but we would like minority populations to have full access and full advantage of participating in these trials if they wish to do so. This week, the government agreed to spend $2 billion to produce 100 million doses of the vaccine if it proves to be effective. And so far, the data strongly indicates that it is. We do see that the vaccine stimulates good antibody response, but more importantly, good neutralizing antibody response and at all the doses from the low up to the high dose. Participants between the ages of 18 and 85 will be followed for 26 months to determine the longevity of the antibodies. But Dr. Like says at least one of the vaccine candidates will be available long before that, perhaps by early next year. Both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are RNA-based vaccines that target the spike protein. The phase three trial of the Moderna vaccine will also be conducted by the CVD. We who are participating in these trials really want all of the companies to be successful because that's the only way that we're gonna get enough vaccine product, not only for the United States, but for the rest of the world. Dean Reese says the School of Medicine clearly has the expertise, experience and infrastructure to be a global leader in the fight against the coronavirus. Whether we have the Institute of Human Virology, or the Institute of Genome Sciences, or the Center for Vaccine Development and Global Health, or, or other multiple engagement. The Shock Trauma Center, for example, mm -hmm. is part of our emergency and epidemic preparedness. And what gives me great pride is that our own faculty, right here at the School of Medicine, is testing these vaccines on behalf of the nation and indeed the world. That gives us an extraordinary um, impact and something for which I think we all should take great pride. Despite the challenges presented by the pandemic, the University of Maryland is expanding drug and alcohol addiction treatment in West Baltimore. The center at 1001 West Pratt Street is now providing more comprehensive care to hundreds of patients. The center recently underwent a renovation thanks to a generous donation from Lori Lundy. We provide medication-based treatment for individuals with opioid use disorder, utilizing methadone and buprenorphine. Um, as we've established our new primary care clinic, we provide primary care services. And we just felt that, uh, you know, it made a lot of sense to put um, medical care uh, and targeted medical care and care management and care coordination and social services, trying to get housing services, you know, more comprehensive care for these patients. With the threat of coronavirus infection, steps have been taken to protect patients and healthcare providers. We've actually um, decreased the frequency at which we're seeing people here. Uh, we're also doing as much as we can via telemedicine. With the ever-present threat of coronavirus, comprehensive care is more important than ever. We tend to have a bit of an older group of patients that have a lot of pre-existing medical conditions. So it's real important that we work with them and make sure that their, their um, health status is as good as it can be um, so they're less vulnerable 
the effects of, of COVID. You can stay up to date by visiting the coronavirus update page on the School of Medicine website. Until next week, I'm Larry Roberts for the University of Maryland School of Medicine.